Matthew, it's uh, good to see you again, uh, even on Zoom and from afar. Uh, thanks for joining us. So good to see you, Michael. It's great to see your face and uh, share this uh, chat with you. Good, good. Thanks. You know, as you know, you have a, a great fan base here uh, in America, uh, in, in Los Angeles, and certainly at the Santa Theater Group. And so when the pandemic hit, and it hit for us um, very hard, um, early on, April, May, we realized that we um, might be out of our theaters for a real long time, which has uh, proven to be true. And uh, that's at the point where I reached out to you um, on behalf of our audience, on behalf of our donors, our, our subscribers, our single ticket buyers, many of whom are joining us here um, for, for both this um, particular production, but the entire series. Um, so it was, uh, I, I was grateful to hear that you had a library of work um, yes. recorded, high quality, uh, and that you and your, uh, and your team were willing to uh, help make it available to us so we could stay in touch with them, um, with our audiences. Um, uh, before we talk about the, um, any of the productions, uh, where are you right now? Um, in terms of the company or where am I precisely? Oh. Uh, physically, emotionally, in terms of the company, all of it. Because look, everything, you know, we're all shrinks right now. It's just like lie on the couch. Well, emotionally quite up and down, like we all are, I'm sure. Um, uh, I'm actually in my little office in London, in right. Islington, London, speaking to you th uh, this evening. Um, the company uh, is basically what happened in, in March when we went into the, the lockdown. Um, we were mid-tour of the Red Shoes, our second UK tour of the Red Shoes. Mm -hmm. We were at a, in Wimbledon, London, actually. And um, we did our what was our final show. We didn't even know it would be our final show, but we had, we had a lot of UK touring to do and a whole Asian tour. We would have only just finished our tour last month. Right. Um, in October, so we uh, we it was rather sad and not being able to say goodbye to the show, you know, in a way, and and just all separating, but rather suddenly, and 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 some people went back to their homes around the world, around the UK. Um, only this week, actually, in the last seven days, we got back in a studio with some of our dancers. Since then, um, uh, to work on something, something film, something film wise. So um, it's been a long time, and. Uh, uh, a tough time for a company that usually spends a lot of time together. Yeah, I would imagine. It's, you know, we have um, it, shows come through our houses and they last for a period of time, you know, two yeah. months, two and a half months. Um, so w we have, you know, sort of guests a lot of times. Uh, but then same thing for us. Um, we had to uh, disband a good portion of our staff to, um, to, to get down to a basic working model when we weren't in the theaters. And that was uh, very difficult to go through. Um, yeah. you know, the, the people that had to be laid off and all of the people who stayed as well. Uh, there, there's, a, you know, there's a bit of survivor's guilt, I would say, in the building. Uh, people are taking on many more responsibilities. And for us, right now we've got a business model that is different from anything any of us have ever done in that we're online. Um, most of it is uh, given out for free. Um, to, to, to our donors and subscribers and, and, and ticket buyers. Uh, but we're, you know, we're working on film now. We have a, a little film studio down at the Kirk Douglas Theater. And we're trying to capture theater on, on film. We're trying to find what's that sweet spot where what we do well still comes across. Um, you had been filming for quite a while now. So yeah. how did you personally make the transition from the, the picture on the stage, the box, the um, where, where you put focus on a big screen to when you started uh, recording some of your productions. Well, I'm so, I'm so grateful we've got these films. You know, we've been doing, we've done quite a lot in the last few years. So the, 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 the fact we have them is brilliant. Um, and I've learned quite a lot about filming theatre, live theatre over the years because I've often had the opportunity to capture one of our shows. And I've discovered actually that the best way to capture a live show is very much the feeling of a performance with a live audience. I've, I've tried to do, years ago I did a, the first film we did of The Car Man, not the one we're showing in this season, but the first time we did it, we did it at Pinewood and we did it without an audience and we tried to make a movie in, in two weeks. 
um, and try to, you know, um, find different ways of shooting. It, it was an exciting prospect at the time, but for me, it didn't capture a piece of theatre. It felt less interesting because it, you didn't show the mechanics of the theatre and, and the way things work. Um, so I learned a lot from that. And now I want to hear the audience. I want to see the mechanics of what's going on. I want to feel that I'm capturing that live experience. And of course it isn't the same. It, it can never be. And we're all lovers, everyone uh, watching this and listening are, are lovers of theatre. And we all know that. Um, but you can, it, it's a really exciting alternative. It can be the, the, the closeness, the detail, you can direct people towards what you want them to see. The performances come across uh, in, in a much stronger way sometimes than they would from a, a distance, you know. And, um, and with a dance production, you don't often see that. So you can see the, uh, the my company in particular, they're, you know, we're, we prize their acting as much as their dancing. And right. it's lovely, lovely to be able to see that. Um, and, I think it tells the story very well. You know, the, uh, if you've got a good editor and you, you work together on that and you don't miss the things you should be uh, seeing, uh, I, I find it a really exciting alternative to the live show. Um, and these films that we have lined up for you are, are really um, do capture that, I think. They really capture the live experience in a, in a, in a way that's very exciting. Now, I will say that, I, well, the first of your productions I saw was Swan Lake uh, when I was playing in New York. Uh, and the, the second one I saw was um, a play without words in London. I, th I think that was the first time uh, I met you. And I remember a play without words having a conscious um, moment where I thought, I, I have to watch the faces as well, because there's a lot going on, more than I had ever seen in any other dance, in that, that most of the dance I experienced was movement. Um, and that's what it just compelled me, the motion um, you know, clearly th there are people like you who I think see many more things, no matter what kind of dance they're watching. But Play Without Words, I thought, oh no, no there's a story going on here that I really, I, I, I want to make sure that I get it. And for me, that was very exciting because it actually opened up dance to me in a bigger way than it had, but particularly with you and, and, and the company. Um, so when, you know, when I heard that you had actually filmed a number of these productions, I thought, oh, good, because a lot of our audiences may have the same experience I had, and mine will be better now because of that, because you've been able to get in and capture, like, moments, uh, faces, you know, reveals that I'm sure will be really <laughs> rewarding. Well, it's interesting. One of the things that we le have learned over the years with performance in, in a live situation and acting a live situation uh, is who do you play to? Do you play to the people you can see right in the front row in the first few rows, or do you play to the people who are right at the back in the, right. the seats at the top where I always used to sit when I was a kid, you know? And I, um, I, I really it troubled me for a while I, as a director about how to direct people to, to what they should do. Cause it was a question that often came up. And actually the answer is always truth. You have to play the truth. And if you play the truth, it reaches everyone. It doesn't look too much for the people in the front row and yet it reaches the people in the back row. And, and I think that's um, why when we come to film the pieces, uh, people say, should I act any differently? Should I be any differently for but this is being filmed? And, I, and now I say, no, you've, you've got it. You know what mm -hmm. you're doing. You, you, you have the truth of the character and the truth of the story. And, and that comes across wherever you are and however close you are. So uh, hopefully that does come across. Yeah, I, I oftentimes when I go to see um, one of our productions for the first time, first rehearsal, early preview, I'll sit in the worst seat in the house. Um, and, and, you know, because you and I are used to walking into our theaters and sitting in a prime seat, nice location, comfortable on the aisle, yeah. basically where a lot of a lot of performances play too, naturally. Um, so it's helpful to step back and, and, and look at it from a different uh, different um, viewpoints uh, and make sure that it's working. Now, let me t talk about when you're building the show in that way of telling the truth. You walk in with a company of actors, dancers. They, they, they really are actors. Uh, how fully developed is the story in your mind and how much of it is collaborative with your company? Well, it's a, 
it's an extraordinary thing because I, I think if you go in on day one with, with a play, at least you can all sit around and read it. You mm. know, you can read the play and there it is and it's what you do with it and how you interpret that. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of it is there. I think on day one of a dance uh, piece, a devised piece, at least, um, you don't have that, you know, and you, you really need to, I need to feed a lot into them before they come in. Lots of research, watch this, read this. I send lots of stuff to people so that they come in sort of full of the ideas that I've been uh, thinking about for some time. I sometimes, I will have written a plot of some sort. I write, write it like a story, you know, I write, you know, what, what the story is, the scenes usually. Uh, it's a, it's a, a kind of a movable feast. It's a document that changes every few days or every day. Um, but it's there so people can read it and they can read the updated version of it. And so I do feed off them a lot and I do bring them into uh, the process and I want to hear what they think about things and any ideas that they have. I particularly did that with the recent Romeo and Juliet because it was, I wanted it to have the feeling of the young people. I wanted to understand how the young people felt. And I changed it quite a lot as it went along um, through discussion and what was important to them. So it is, it, yeah, ultimately it's, a, it's very collaborative um, in terms of the storytelling as much as the dancing and the, and the acting and everything. Yeah. Uh, how, how much of the, your company um, is employed by you right now? How many people are you able to retain? Well, it's, we, we have a very small office uh, who is the main sort of stay of our company in terms of the administrative side of the office. It's only about eight or nine people. Mm -hmm. And we furloughed some of them initially, and then, or, or they sort of uh, went in and out of furlough. Um, now they're all working, I think. We've got several projects that we've sort of planned that we feel were more likely to happen, which is to do with filming things. Mm -hmm. um, but the dancers and the crew, and all the people involved, the creatives and all the departments, the artistic departments and the crew, they're all um, freelancers. Right. So as you know, they're the, the group that suffered the most because they, they were um, just out of work. Yeah. And we've done lots of things to try and engage with them throughout this time. But the dancers, we do online class and we, we've got lots of little... Um, bursaries and things for them to, to study uh, other things that they may be interested in. Um, some very nice people came in and supported them with some finance when uh, the ones that were suffering a little bit more. Um, but it's been, you know, it's a long period now and uh, it's, we're trying to find ways of getting them back into the studio and back into work so that we can employ some of our, some of our top dancers and crew, you know, but it's, that's been tough. Yeah. Uh, is there government support over there? Uh, it's on and off. It has been. It hasn't worked for everyone. The the, the group it's really not worked for are the freelancers in theatre and film. And really, it's it, it didn't really. And I I feel we have a government in some ways that thinks it's not very important what right. we're doing, whereas we know and a lot of the public know it's very important to them what we do at times like this. They need it. They need it. And they need us. And they need what we do. Um, and I don't think our government really truly understands that. Yeah. No, I, it's, it, it's the same here in the, in the case that the, those freelancers, actors, directors, designers, choreographers, uh, you know, uh, people go from uh, crews, show to show, you know, uh, customers, um, their lives are tough at the best of times because employment is sporadic uh, and uh, um, potential offers don't always line up with your availability. Um, uh, uh, so I've, you know, over the decades, watch very talented people go for long periods of time w without work. And then of course, when this hit, um, they, they are, they're, they're freelancers, they're on their own. And m many of the people here, um, their healthcare is tied to the number of weeks they work in the theater through their unions. And there's a, there's a potential collapse coming there as well. So um, we've had the same thing. We've had people reach out to give us um, um, support for both um, uh, staff members and individual artists that we could employ uh, for up to a year, certainly not at the salaries they would be making, but something that's gonna mitigate or, or, or completely lessen um, uh, some of the burdens they're bearing right now. But it's, it's hard to watch and know that 
we don't have the answer there. Uh, so, you know, the day the doors open back up is going to be, I think, you know, very exciting for all of us. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I that we're losing people from our profession as well because they they can't really survive for right. this, long, this long and and also they're worried about the future it happening again and uh we we the fear is we'll lose a lot of talent yeah. um of course we're very lucky because we have our national health service and i should really mention that because it's it's a, such a godsend for mm. us at the moment we we do have that um, I can only imagine how, how hard it is for people who, who rely on their employment to get their health benefits. Mm -hmm. It's tough, very tough. Yep. Yep. Uh, let's talk about a couple of the shows that we're going to be watching. I don't know that we'll talk about um, all of them. Uh, yep. the, the first one I want to talk about is Carmen because I haven't seen it. Uh, and I know that it played here in Los Angeles at the Amundsen, um, let's say, I think probably about 19, 20 years ago. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, that that run? Yeah, well, it was a, it was an extraordinary time. It's it, as you you say, it hasn't been at, at, at the Amundsen for a long time, um, but it was two thousand and one, and it was the uh, I think our opening night. Uh, anyone who's around at that time may remember was was um, uh, just our, was our opening our official opening was just after nine the terrible events of nine eleven, and uh, we were all with our, the Amundsen team at that time and experienced that and that awful time together, which I think sort of cemented our, our relationship in, in a new way. You know, I think we, we, we felt that together. We went through it together and we actually did end up doing some performances soon after. I think the first one we did was a free performance, even anyone who wanted to come, you know, and I, I think it was, um, just the thing of being together was so important at that time and, and everyone was so in shock. Um, so the show in itself didn't really have the, the, the feeling maybe it, it might have had. It was going very well in the previews and everything and, and sort of a, a, a nice buzz. And then it became something else. It became about something else, and and, and rightly so. And and but we had a tour actually that, that collapsed afterwards because of course nobody was thinking about going out. Uh, but it's a show that I'd love to you know share with people again, and uh, and it, for people to see if they didn't see it there. And I'm sure there's a, a big new audience of people who've seen our other shows who've not seen it. So that's going to be a great one to show. Um, and it was, it was filmed fairly recently, if it, about, two, about three or four years ago, uh, with the with a really great cast, um, including actually Zizi Strallen, who uh, is plays Lana in it, and she's actually uh, well not currently, but she is, should be currently playing Mary Poppins in the West End. So it's two more two more different roles you couldn't imagine. She's right. the ultimate triple threat, you know. Yeah, there and, you go. Yeah, so it, it, it's a. It, and it's different to our other shows. It's a it's a thriller, you know, and it's something that we we challenged ourselves to do at the time, uh, to try and tell a story with that had twists and turns in it. And um, it, it started my feeling that that we shouldn't have um, a scenarios in programs because I mm -hmm. thought well, a thriller. When you're going to see a thriller, you don't want anyone to tell you the end or yeah. how <laughs> exactly, yeah. middle. Yeah. What's the twist? You just say, oh, I'm not going to want to see it now. That's so it yeah. did that whole thing for me, you know, and I think, no, it's my job to tell the story to the audience. They don't need to have read it beforehand. Just come and watch and yeah. follow. No, I'm, yeah. when I walk into a theater and I see a sign that says, warning, you know, uh, uh, fog, strobes, gunshots, uh, language, it's like, you're ruining it for me. <laughs> don't ruin it for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now I'm waiting for a gunshot, okay? <laughs> I'm afraid we do have that in the car, man. We do have yeah. that. Yeah, um, <laughs> we have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think off the top of my head, I think that you and the company have been with us probably 14, 15 times since late, like 1996, 97. Uh, and I think, yeah. 96. 77, that's right, yeah. yeah. That, uh, that sounds right. Uh, yeah. uh, with, with Swan Lake, uh, and I think it's, uh, we've now had it uh, at the theater three times, I believe. That's right. Uh, since the first time coming. Um, when did you film this production of Swan Lake? Well, funny enough, we have filmed it three times. We, we filmed it 
around 96 with Adam Cooper as our original right. the role of the swan and we filmed it very quickly at the end of our first tour um, so that's the oldest one then we did it in in 2010 or 11 we did it in 3d believe it or not you can't really find it in 3d anywhere now because it's gone out of fashion but at the time right. it was the thing so we did Swan Lake in 3d um, and then more recently we've done this new production it's actually the production we brought to the Armisen right. I, only well it's actually this year at the beginning of the year we were still yeah. there weren't we? and I um, it's that new production that Les and I worked on to rethink the piece and uh, we really wanted to capture that as well um, and it's um, again a wonderful cast but a lot of the cast that people uh, who, who, who did come will have seen some of them they will have seen yeah good, good. Um, I also want to touch on Romeo and Juliet because yeah. That is a production that um, we've been talking about doing live at the Amundsen. That the, you know we're we're planning on doing that show in the future. Yeah. Uh, and when um, I saw the roster of shows that uh, you had filmed, and this was on it, um, I had sort of a, a, a split second thinking: should we show it in advance of the, the, the live production? And then I immediately thought: no, actually, I think that this people will be interested in it. The people that love you seeing it. I think that um, seeing it live soon after this, which will be um, hopefully within, you know, the next 18 months, two years, that we yeah. just have a body of uh, people that would come to see it live having seen it tape. But for me, it'll be the first time I've seen one of your productions prior to being in the room with it. Uh, and so I, I actually, I want to go through that experience um, as well. How many people do, do you know that have first been introduced to your work on film? Because there are, are there a lot of them? Well, a lot, I think, because because they're so widely seen now, you know, and you don't realize the, uh, I don't sometimes realize what, how far around the world they go um, in countries where we've never been. So they would never get the chance to see these things live. So they're introduced to the work, you hear from them. Um, I, I actually did a premiere of the Romeo and Juliet um, uh, in Russia. I spoke to a big audience in Russia at the end of the show, you know, there was a packed house there. Um, it's, it's fascinating, you know, and, but also in your own country, you know, in, in little villages and towns where there's no big theater nearby or people are, you know, they can't, Get about as they once did or for and any number of reasons they can't get to a theater it's great but i also feel that from what you were thinking i know us in the theater sometimes you think well we're giving away too much are we are we gonna are people gonna want to see it live i i think it actually has the opposite effect i think it makes more people want to see it ultimately um and romeo and juliet in particular i'm very i'm really excited that you did decide to take it michael because i i I um, it is the one that hasn't been yet, as you say, and um, I think it's worth seeing uh, to think about. It's got a lot to think about in it. It's quite a provocative version of Romeo and Juliet. It's from anyone expecting to see or follow the plot that they know, please don't. It just just watch it on its own terms. It's very very different. Um, it's quite a hard watch at times, even, but um, it's very. Uh, you know very real real and, and honest about young people and how they are and but also the center of it is this sort of amazing first love uh story which everyone sort of connects with in a way there, there is, it does have its um its joys and its pleasures but it's it's quite a tough story as we know anyway you know it's a, a lot of bad, uh, things happen in it um and we actually, one thing I want people to look out for is we tried to choreograph the longest ever kiss in a <laughs> dance production, maybe even in a theatre production, I don't know, but we could do this very, very long kiss where they don't, where their mouths don't, uh, their mouths stay locked together while they're dancing. It just goes on forever. But I think that's what young people are like, you know, yeah. once they start kissing, they can't stop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, and a lot of people identify with that. So it's, yeah. it's, Actually, uh, just last night I was watching a, a, a film, Gregory's Girl, uh, which is set in Scotland, about uh, a, a young kid, high school, falling in love. And there is a section where the, the girl kisses him for the, the first time, standing at the door. And they just keep like 
breaking away for a second and then just going back in. It's like, <laughs> I, I don't know, you know, a, a, a host of emotions. And it just made me laugh out loud because it did. It reminded me of, you know, a period of my life when, you know, a, a kiss was the universe, you know, at that time. Yeah. Uh, you know, it meant everything. Um, well, that's great. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, Los Angeles has a, a, a dance audience and, and a really good dance audience, but yeah. over the years, it has not had a major established um, uh, ballet company. There are some really great smaller companies here, but we, we, the, the, the kind of scale of companies you see in other large cities um, don't exist here, even though there is a dance audience. So over the years, um, you've become basically LA's dance company. Um, uh, how do you find the audiences here? Um, how does the company find it? Uh, is it a, a treat to come to LA? Have you started to establish relationships outside of the working relationships that, that we have here? Well, I'm very proud you said that, uh, Michael, because that's the way I feel, and I, I, I know we're not there all the time, but we do come regularly, as you say, and I, I feel very much a part of the family when we come. And with the audiences as well, I recognize people again and again, and a lot of the donors and people I've got to know over the years, and uh, familiar faces and names. Uh, it's, it, it is weird, I, I've often said it, that it's our second home, and it really is. There's nowhere else like it in terms of that for us, you know, that regular visits with a lot of the same people that we're seeing. Um, it's, um, I, for me, it's my favorite place in the, in the States, you know, and, it, and I'm not just saying that. Um, I, I always feel most at home, most appreciated. Um, I, love, I love the audiences, the reactive audiences um, that are very generous, actually. And, um, uh, different to New York you know I find New York audiences possibly a little more sit back and okay show us what you've got you know mm. I think it, there's a there's a big open-armed warmth that comes from an LA audience that we always feel and I always tell it to people who've not been when they come you know for the first said you're going to love these audiences mm. and they uh, soon afterwards a couple of shows in they're going oh I know exactly what you meant it's wonderful yeah. um so, uh, you know, we can never wait to come back. We always want to come back and, and uh, see everyone again. And I must say that one of the things that we love the, uh, the last few times we've been is the, is the uh, young people's performance that we do every time now. It's so memorable. Um, those, those kids are brilliant. You know, they're, they're so well primed for what they're about to see. Uh, they're the most appreciative audience, the best audience ever, you know, and, and uh, we love it. We love that. We wish we could do it here more, but it's it, it's in L.A. that we get that and we, we love it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's one of the great joys of working at the theater is to go to the student matinees. And uh, you, you may have had this happen the, the first couple of times you did student matinees. A lot of the companies that come through that are touring, uh, um, we say we, we want to do, we need to do a student matinee. And the, the company will say, oh, 10 a.m. in the morning, you gotta be kidding me, I gotta get up at what time, go to the theater for students. Invariably, at the end of every student performance, every single person backstage, on stage says, I do that all the time if I could. That was the <laughs> best audience I've ever been in front of. And then you do the talkbacks, and it's amazing, sort of the range and the depth of questions or comments or insights uh, the, 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 that the kids have. Um, it really is. If, if I'm having a tough week and there's a student matinee, done. I'm yeah. good. I'm good for the next month. Yeah. Do you do yeah. them on most productions, Mike? Or is it a regular thing? Yeah, yeah, we try to. We, we, yeah. we try to. And certainly we're looking at, you know, a middle school at the youngest and, you know, high school for us, um, yeah. uh, a, a good portion of them. Uh, in fact, we'll be sharing um, um, s s some of these films with our students because we're still teaching. I, actually, our education program is as strong and, and solid and even expanded um, when, when we didn't have to meet physically. Our, our, our education team pivoted in 48 hours and they were right back doing everything they, they needed to be doing. So actually we were able to gain knowledge on the artistic team from, from following them. So it's, um, yeah, it, it, it'll be great to pass these on to the students as well. That's great. 
Uh, listen, it's been great to see you. I can't wait to see you in person. Uh, uh, first thing as always is just a big hug. A big hug back, Michael, and to everyone out there. Thanks, Matthew. We'll see you soon. Bye, Michael. Bye.